you would take roll. Uh, Kim, thank you. Senator Anderson. Here. Senator Furphy. Here. Senator McEwen. Excused. Senator Pappas. Here. Chairman Landon. And I'm here too, thank you. Yeah. Uh, first bill for our consideration committee is Senate file 112, insurance discount for accident prevention training. Um, so, Senator Pappas, you have, um, I understand, worked with a couple of parties regarding this bill while I was off doing something else. And uh, um, Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I can just give you some background while we're writing for the uh, amendment. Maybe and we can yeah. probably even talk about the amendment. Absolutely. While we're yeah. uh, coming down. So you are going to propose an amendment for 112 is my understanding. Correct. Is that, is that right? Okay. Correct. And so I, I met today with the uh, insurance uh, folks um, and, and they're attending today if they would like to speak to it. But um, uh, and I also met with YDOT and everybody was in, in agreement that basically the intent um, of the amendment that we'll be getting is instead of modifying, what are you getting uh, in, instead of modifying um, 2614 105 paragraph C Romanet uh, two, is uh, the, the agreement was let's just get rid of it all. So we'll be deleting, the amendment will be deleting, repealing all of 2614-105C. And the amendment does have a couple of other items to fix the, uh, the language in the in earlier- In the enactment. In the enactment. Um, okay. It looks like we've got the amendment right now. So why don't we, uh, why don't we track it in and, and uh, dispense of it. Thank you. Daniel, thank you. Very helpful. Appreciate that. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, first of all, do you, do you want a motion on the bill to discuss it, or? Yeah, I I would. Um, and uh, Senator McKeown, we we have taken up Senate File One Twelve. Um, Senator Pappas has been working with our insurance uh, constituents as well as with YDOT, and uh, they have a proposed amendment. Uh, which in essence is going to eliminate paragraph C and um, the bill itself. So anyway, that catches the Senator up and uh, Senator Pappas, yeah. uh, I would entertain a motion on the bill uh, from I'll move the bill. So Senator Pappas moved the bill. Do I have a second? Yeah. Second, Senator Furphy. So it's been moved and seconded. Let's work the bill. Um, I'm not going to take... Uh, I don't think it's necessary. I got waited caught in the hallway. Well, yeah. understand that happens. No problem, <laughs> Senator. Uh, uh, so I uh, was going to check with you, Senator Pappas. Would you like for um, any testimony before we take up this uh, amendment? That would probably be appropriate in my mind. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so Miss Shaner, would you like to come forward? Which of you? Thank you very much. Good deal. Ms. Shaner, what are you thinking about doing to this bill? Uh, Chairman oh, Landon. You uh, saw where the yeah. chairman's name is on this, right? I know, Chairman Landon. Okay. Uh, Mary Ann Shaner on behalf of State Farm Insurance. And we do support the amendment that uh, Senator Pappas has presented. And I think that what this amendment does is that it takes it back to what was the uh, language in Senate File 10, uh, which was worked over the interim. And um, I guess from an insurance perspective, that with this provision before um, is that with these discounted driver courses that they're really not actuarially supported with a, a discount and the specific class that you take is not really tied to potential losses and as written there's no really guardrails in relation to what the driver courses would be um, or what they could be so you could potentially sign up for you know a 15 minute 
class and then get a discount. And now with taking the department out of this bill, then there, there would be uh, not really any oversight in that regard. So again, I think that what this amendment does is it takes it back to what was discussed during the interim, which was to completely remove this section in its entirety. So we stand in support of Senator Pappas's amendment, as well as uh, Catherine Wilkinson with APCIA, American Property Casualty Insurers Association, could not be here this evening due to a conflict, and she also stands in support of this amendment. I'd be happy to stand for any questions. Hey, Ms. Shaner, thank you very much. Uh, committee questions for Ms. Shaner? I have one, which is um, obviously at some time in the past, we have felt it necessary to compel our insurance companies to provide a discount. If, if they train, uh, force our drivers to be trained and safe. Does that mean this, this idea of safe drivers and a 10% discount is gonna go away? Mr. Chairman, um, under this amendment, it, it would be taken out of statute. However, you know, there are a lot of things with insurance companies and your policies um, that are specific to, to each uh, individual contract. And so then that would be something between your insurance company and the insurer. But it, it's likely that, that those sorts of discounts would still be available, right? Most yes, insurance companies give you a a discount anyway. You don't have to compel it in law. Mr. Chairman, um, obviously I can't speak on behalf of all insurance companies, but yes, I believe that that is generally the case. Okay. Thank you. Senator Pappas. Mr. Chairman, and, and to that point, my discussions with uh, the director of, uh, of YDOT uh, is absolutely uh, behind this uh, legislation as well. He says YDOT has no business getting in between the insurer and the insurance company and mandating discounts or anything of, of sorts. So he's, he's, he's happy with this. You know, I, thank you, Senator and, and committee. That's really why I brought this bill back uh, out of the, out of the omnibus transportation amendment bill. You remember which went down in the, uh, in the Senate uh, chamber. And that was just to simply get Y dot out of it. So, um, Thank you, Ms. Shaner. Yes, thank you. We appreciate it. And I, I think that that definitely hits a point is that it takes the state in general out of it and leaves it up to the insurance our in company and the insurer. Okay, thank you very much for your pay. Senator Furphy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One quick question, <clears throat> excuse me. ARP used to provide training for senior citizens and then they would get a discount. Is that still available? Shaner? Mr. Chairman, Senator Furphy, I, I do not know the answer to that question. I can see if I can uh, find the answer to that and get back with you. I think Senator Furphy's checking for four out of the five members of the committee, <laughs> if you could get back to something. <laughs> there you go. I'm feeling uh, better already. Yeah, you, feel good. you notice how good I am to the rookie. I mean, you know, take care of the man. Ms. Shaner, thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Further testimony on Senate file 112. It doesn't look like anyone else is gonna come forward and pontificate Mr. for director, us. The, the director. And uh, so I'm gonna go online to the good director of the Wyoming Department of Transportation. Director Luke Reiner, how are you? Well, doing? hey, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee for the record, Luke Reiner, director of YDOT. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think it's already been said uh, by multiple people, but certainly we would concur with uh, the removal of this. Uh, it, it seems like uh, insurance business is insurance business and and uh, and my preference would to be out of it. And so I uh, would fully support the amendment as is proposed. Hey, thank you, Director Reiner. Appreciate it. Any questions for the director? Okay, committee. Um, oh, we do have someone else. My and the insurance department is online. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's uh, Thank thanks for being here. Oh, happy to. Um, um, uh, it's been a while since I've seen you, sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to, to say that we've talked with YDOT. This is built into our statute, and we think it's it's a great change. It's it's time for an update. 
Uh, and I just wanted to let you know that we we concur with with the uh, what's being amended and taking out uh, uh, that subparagraph C. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys being patient, and being here, Senator Anderson. Mr. Chairman, I just had a, a question for Director Reiner. Uh, heard earlier that it was really going to make him happy if we got him out of the insurance business. I, I just wondered if he's really happy now or when he's going to be really happy. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Anderson, you know, I'm a happy fellow. <laughs> so uh, just thank you for contributing to that. <laughs> All right, Director, thank you. And again, really I appreciate the Director of Insurance being here. Um, now, I think uh, I, I don't see anybody else waiting. Uh, Danielle, if there's anyone else, uh, please allow them to come forward. Otherwise, we're going to close testimony. And, and uh, I think Senator Pappas wants to move an amendment. We've already moved the bill, so take it away, Senator Pappas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I would like to uh, move the uh, draft bill uh, that you have that says Senate File 0112, um, uh, Amendment 701, First Amendment uh, to the bill. And if you look at the amendment, uh, lines one and two basically uh, make some uh, required changes in the uh, enacting uh, paragraph. Uh, but the crux of the bill is uh, page or of the amendment is um, page uh, line four, which is uh, page one lines 10 through 16. So we're basically deleting um, um, all of uh, section one, that part of section one on page one, and then on to page two, lines one through 11. Uh, so um, all section one, all the all the uh, text in section one is, is being deleted. And then uh, section one is replaced by a repealer that actually replaces, uh, uh, repeals uh, 2614-105C. Okay, committee, any questions for the Senator? Are you ready for the question on the amendment? All in favor of Senator Pappas's uh, proposed amendment, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. That amendment has passed. We're on the bill and um, question. as it is now uh, unwritten, uh, Kim, would you please take roll on Senate File 112? Senate File 112, Senator Anderson. Aye. Senator Furphy? Aye. Senator McEwen? Aye. Senator Pappas? Aye. Chairman Landon? Aye. Thank you, Kim. I'm, I'm sorry, five ayes do okay. pass amended. That's all right. The next bill for our consideration, Senate File 106. Um, I'm going to ask the, uh, the director of the Department of Transportation to come back in, maybe to offer a few thoughts on Senate File 106. Um, Director Reiner, this um, is a piece of that omnibus statutory amendment bill that, uh, that we took to the Senate and, and it had too many topics in it. So, so you and I went to work and we created 106 and 107. What's in 106? Yeah, you know, Mr. Chairman, uh, let me just start by by thanking you for bringing these back. I cer certainly appreciate that effort because these are all important, you know, little things in statute to police up. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if, with your permission, I'd like to uh, invite Mr. Rossetti to talk us through the details as most of this is in, in his area of expertise. Absolutely, Director, thank you. Mr. Rossetti, welcome tonight. Can you walk us through 106, please? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Taylor Rossetti, Support Services for YDOT, uh, thanks for having me tonight. Um, yes, th this bill really, I guess, is, is, uh, is pretty narrowly focused on, um, you know, registration and plate language, as well as getting rid of some um, obsolete definitions. So we narrowed the scope of that omnibus bill to a, a kind of a tighter bill. Um, if you look there on, on page one, carrying over to page two, um, lines nine and 10 of the bill. This is where upon the loss and mutilation of some of the specialty pit plates, there's a $30 fee that's collected. Um, this is just modernizing the language to add the new specialty plates that have been added since 2009, which was the last time the 
statute was amended. Um, in practice, this is really what happens currently. This is just codifying that. Those plates, just for the fo uh, everyone's information, are street rods, custom vehicles, um, the specialty plates for Gold Star, the tribal license plates, and the wildlife conservation plates. So that's the language there on page two. Moving over then, uh, page three. Uh, we, have a, we have a question, Mr. Sure. Rosetti. Uh, yeah. Senator Travis. So, so uh, uh, does this now include every plate that's made? Mr. Rosetti? Mr. Chairman, um, Senator Pappas, it does. Okay, including the the ant the antique car plates or what are, the pioneer plates, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, Senator Pappas, uh, I believe that was covered in a previous amendment prior to two thousand and nine. We're we're covered, sir. We're covered. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Rosetti, would you do me a favor and and run through that list again? I I thought it was later in the bill, but I'm not seeing it. So. Can you tell me again what's what's in this uh, underlined language on 10, 9, and 10? Certainly, uh, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Um, 31 to 226 brings in the street rod plate. 31 to 227 brings in the custom vehicle plate. 31 to 29 brings in the specialty plate gold star. 31 to 230 is the tribal license plate. And 31231 it brings in the wildlife conservation plate, which, if you recall, is the most recent plate that's been adopted. So, Mr. Rossetti, 312229 is the specialty uh, gold star? Yep. Yes, sir. Mr. Rossetti, are you there? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, can you hear me still? Yes. So yes. 230 is what plate? Uh, 230 is the tribal license plate. Okay. Uh, thank you for, I'm riding a little slower horse tonight. So thank you for letting me catch up. Uh, <laughs> please proceed, Mr. Rossetti. Thank you. Sorry, sir. I just thought I could probably wait you out in that silence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sure. Thank you, sir. Moving on then through uh, the rest of page two and on to three, that is current existing language. And there on page three on lines 10 and 11, that pulls us into 3116-127. The changes made here are on page four. And, and really what this does in, in the section between lines two and lines 14 is instead of prescribing this fee that is already that is in this particular section, it's referring those same fees to the actual fee that exists in the other section of statute. So in section C between lines two and six, instead of having this pr prescriptive idea that these folks would get two uh, demo plates for $50, it will give them basically the option to indicate whether they want to get one or two plates. And then the cost of those plates is as prescribed in the other spot of statute, which is 313102 AV. So what that does is if there's ever a change in, in that statute, it's automatically reflected here rather than having to come back and clean this one up as well. Um, and and the, a similar modification then is done in section D and this is for the temporary tags. So if you recall, those are the old, old green tags that used to go on vehicles. Uh, we, we've updated and modernized that system. So the cost and the way those are um, allocated are different. So this then would refer a, a vendor to the rules and regulations basically, and, and they would get those plates at cost. So all this does is, is clean that up and it keeps uh, somebody from an out of state RV show equivalent with an in-state operator. Um, and then we don't ever have to worry about going back and um, updating fees in multiple places. It gets us all in one spot. For Mr. Rossetti on uh, paragraph D. Yes, sir. I'm still writing on paragraph C, but I think I still got paragraph D. Um, 
Editor Anderson, are you with us? Are you good? I'm happy. I'm just like the director. All right, good. Well, it's good to hear. I like that. Mr. Rossetti, uh, please proceed. I guess you're right just about to the end of this little remake. Um, yes. And, um, can you run through the repealers real quick? You, you bet, Mr. Chairman. Certainly slow me down if you need to or, or prod me if you need to as well. So, so the repealer section, you see there down in section two, lines 16 and 17. And three of those really go very much hand in hand. So that first one, uh, 3116101AXXI, and then the two on line 17 really go together. And, and what those have to do with is basically the uh, antiquated language that's sitting in chapter 16 that relates to antique dealers. We no longer have antique dealers. So what this does is it, it repeals the definition for antique vehicles that's sitting in the chapter 16. It's repealing the license uh, for an antique automobile dealer. And, and just it's getting rid of all of that language that's, that's really no longer needed in the dealer licensing section related to antique dealers. Automobile dealers can still sell antique cars but they just sell them under a normal license. There isn't a separate antique dealer license. So th that takes care of those three repealers, sir. And then the final repealer that's sitting there is at the end of line 16, and that is 3116101B. And, and that is the, an antiquated definition that really has remained in statute since we believe 1997. And what that basically does is it removes that, that language that was used prior to trailer and motorcycle dealers having a dealer license. Um, so in practice, that, that definition just is not applicable anymore. And that's all we're trying to do with these, three, these uh, four repealers there are on page four. Hey, Mr. Rossetti, thank you for that. Questions, committee? Anything else for Mr. Rossetti? Okay, thank you. Uh, director, anything that you want to add on this before we go to any public comment on this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, no, that was covered well. For me, you know, it always, I think the ability to sort of elevate or speech uh, some of this certainly um, at the top of, of, of page four, it, it's, it consolidates fees in one place in the statute for efficiency and effectiveness. And, and that, that to me was, it was, is, is a good piece of legislation. But Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm very comfortable with this and would stand for any questions for Wyatt out as well. Okay, thank you, Director. Um, Committee, if there's nothing else, I do want to go to public comment. Um, is there any public comment here in the room? There is not. And so, Danielle, is there anyone with a, a little blue hand up um, with Mr. us Chairman? tonight oh. virtually? Go ahead. I, I do not see anyone here virtually. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to close public testimony on this one. Uh, fellow senators, what is your pleasure on this bill? Move the bill. Okay, I'll go Senator Anderson moving and Senator Furphy seconding, since it was kind of in tandem. Uh, let's work the bill. Senators, anything on page one that, that you think we ought to change? Anything on page two? How about page three or four? Okay, are we ready to have a question on this bill? Okay. Uh, Kim, would you please call roll on Senate file 106? Senate file 16, Senator Anderson. Aye. Senator Furphy. Aye. Senator McEwen. Aye. Senator Pappas. Aye. Chairman Landon. Aye. Five ayes do All pass. Right. I thought that was the case. Uh, uh, unless somebody really wants to carry this, I'll, I'll try to run it out there. And if, if you guys will back me up, especially if a fight breaks out, would you, you'll be there for me, right? 
I, I think you'll do a great job. And if a fight breaks out, we'll make sure you don't get hurt. Yeah, you're clear up somewhere else. Uh, you know, you could get down here and help out a little bit. Okay, Senator Anderson, thanks for weighing in, though. We appreciate it. Next I, bill for our – go I, ahead, Senator Pappas. I'm thinking he would just duck, though. You know, he's right in front of you <laughs> and behind me. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Next bill for our consideration, Senate File 107. Uh, Director Reiner, what can you tell us about 107? Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, 107 is, um, again, I, I think a very, a very simple bill. And let's let Mr. Rossetti talk us through the details here. Okay, thank you, Director. Uh, Mr. Rossetti, welcome back. You did such a good job on 106. We're going to let you do 107. Uh, walk us through this amazing little uh, transportation bill. M Mr. Chairman, thank you. Again, Taylor Rossetti, Support Services at YDOT. Um, what we're doing in uh, Senate File 107 is just updating some language and what this has to do with is the operation of commercial vehicles. Uh, and just for quick background, uh, most folks are aware of, you know, what, what an apportioned vehicle is. And these vehicles can basically pay a proportional registration and, and also be part of a group called IFTA, which is the International Fuel Tax Agreement. So what that means is, is they pay fuel tax in all of the states that they operate in. Underneath the fuel tax agreement, um, taxes collected for gasoline, for diesel, and for alternative fuels. The language that you see there on page two on um, lines 9, 10, and 11, I'll, I'll walk you through what the change is being done here. So there are also folks that don't pay that proportional fee. You know, you just own a vehicle that you operate primarily in, say, the state to the west of us. And every once in a while, you have to come into Wyoming. So what you do is you buy a, a trip permit. And right now, the language that's sitting there on line 9, 39706G, F9706D is diesel fuel. And then we're adding 39.17.306F, which is those alternative fuels. So, so this is like... Um, uh, an electrified vehicle or a vehicle that runs on propane or something other than gasoline and diesel. So this is just making it clear that those, those vehicles that are buying a permit underneath this and operating on alternative fuels would pay the same fee that a gasoline and a diesel vehicle would, would be charged. That could be natural gas, Mr. Rossetti, for example. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, correct. Okay. Committee, are we, are we staying up on that front? Are we good? Okay. Please continue. Chairman, I have a question. Thanks. Senator Anderson. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my question for Mr. Rossetti. I've noticed that uh, there's some uh, three quarter ton, one ton, half ton pickups that have apportioned uh, plates on them also. Is that for any size vehicle? Mr. Rossetti. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Anderson, um, it, they, they must meet the definition of commercial uh, motor vehicle, which is the 26,001 combined weight um, in, in order to register underneath that, that thing. So th 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 those would be those big, big pickup trucks that are operating in commercial operations and choose to be in, in the IRP. So it's, it's not for all vehicles. They have to be commercial vehicles. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, Mr. Rossetti, please con continue. Sure, Mr. Chairman. M moving on, th this is a little bit new, but we're trying to accomplish the same thing here. On, lines, on line 19, we added section T of the same section, and, and this was actually a very good catch by, by you guys in LSO. So this, this specifically talks about how you're going to treat a vehicle that is here in the motion picture industry. And, and, and really what this does is, that establishes that those vehicles can be in the state on a, a permit without having to change their registration fee, but they have to um, get the fee here. And you see what we do is add on line two on page three. Again, you've got 3917106G, which is your gas, your 3917206D, which is your diesel. And we're adding again, alternative fuels for 3917306F. 
So again, we're just adding conforming language. So those operators underneath all three fuels are treated the same way. So Mr. Rossetti, uh, cover that again, the, the premise of paragraph T. They can be here uh, and not have to change a permit, I think you said. Yeah, so, so there's licensing exemptions. If, if you read through section T there on line 22, it talks about a vehicle who is properly registered in another state and not entitled to a registration or licensing exemption under 312.224, which there's various exemptions in there. Most of these vehicles would not likely fall into those exemptions. That, that's an area where you'd have an exemption like if you were a college student or, or something like that. What this basically says as an alternative to registering your vehicle, you, you basically can get this vehicle permit for 90 days to be here for the motion picture injury, industry. I believe this is a way to try to recruit um, those industries from coming here without adding extra onerous fees on them, you know, requiring them to register their vehicles here. So, so this was to try to entice them to come in here. However, there is a fee required for some of those vehicles for the fuel tax purposes. And that's what we're changing here is to make sure that there would be a fee for gas, diesel and alternative fuels. So those vehicles would be treated the same way. That, that's what we're doing is just making that conforming. Okay, before we leave that, any questions committee? Okay, Mr. Rossetti, please proceed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that would run us through uh, line 15 there, and it, that's just basically your effective date of July 1. Okay, well done. Thank you, Mr. Rossetti. Any other questions, committee? Uh, Director, anything that you'd like to add? Mr. Chairman, no, thank you. All right. Um, so, Danielle, I'll, I'll check with you the same way. If there's any blue hands up, uh, please let them in. Otherwise... We will close public testimony. It doesn't look like we have anybody else committee. So I'm gonna close public testimony on Senate file 107, uh, moved by Senator Pappas, Second. seconded by Senator McCune. Uh, so any amendments on any of the pages for any of the three pages for Senate file 107 committee. Mr. Chairman, I call the question. Okay. Senator Anderson, are you good on Senate file 107? I'm good. I'm good, Mr. Chairman. You know, I was thinking committee that Senator Anderson, you know, he hasn't presented a transportation bill yet. Boy, he wouldn't he look good behind this one? It's I just- early on though, Mr. Chairman. Out, you know, yeah. It's early on. Yeah, you know, but maybe you get behind this one on commercial trucks. You bet. You bet <laughs> I, I think good. 26,000 and up. I think you're the man. You got it. You got it. Now I got to vote against it. <laughs> Would you please take roll, Kim, on Senate File 107? Senator Anderson. Aye. Senator Furphy. Aye. Senator McEwen. Aye. Senator Pappas. Aye. Chairman Landon. Hi, Bye Senator guys. Anderson. When this when this comes out, we're right behind you if a fight breaks out. Okay, uh, yes, Senator Chairman. Pappas. Uh, did you want me to do one twelve? Uh, that or would be terrific if you, you don't want to do it since your name's on the bill. Well, actually, no. I, I'd love okay. to have you do that, Senator uh, Pappas, because boy, I, I'll be worn out from doing one hundred six. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I know that we can throw that football to Senators Furphy and McEwen if we need them. Uh, committee, just real quickly, and appreciate Kim's help on this. Uh, thank you for putting together tomorrow, Kim. At 12.15, we will visit with um, a couple of the Transportation Commission nominees uh, to serve on that commission. And the more I thought about it, even, if, even though it was a busy week, I, I, I thought maybe we should have a visit with those guys. So uh, Senator Furphy, I know, has an appointment at 1230, but, um, and Senator Pappas is sitting in Senate revenue at that time, trying to come up with some money. So it might just be you and me, Senator McKinnon. Maybe Senator Anderson can, can be in on the action too. But anyway, we'll visit with those uh, 
with those commission nominees, and I think it's appropriate. Yeah. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, depending on where we're at in revenue, I'll try to step out. Thank you. Also, uh, one other point I'm, I might make, uh, would you guys please leave um, Senate file 73 back in your folder so we don't have to reprint them next time? Thank you, Kim. Uh, we will take up um, uh, tolling authority for I-80, which is Senate file 73, and we're going to we're going to carry that over to Monday, Senator Anderson. Just um, and committee, we will not meet on Friday night. I know you wanted to, but I I thought maybe it was better if we didn't. <laughs> we're yeah, you know. Stand back from the door on Friday afternoon, I'll tell you that, because people are going out of it. I think uh, that does it for tonight. Uh, oh, Senator Anderson. Mr. Chairman, are those uh, interviews going to be uh, on the on the Zoom? Are you, they are. are, are they, they're not coming in. Uh, they, they are not coming in. They'll be over the Zoom. And so, okay, okay. Uh, and one of those uh, is a new appointment. Or they're both new appointments, Kim? Um, the ones that you are seeing um, are, are on the Zoom will be new appointments. New appointments. The one I'm going to pass out some information um, about the gentleman that's already in place at the um, Transportation Commission. I'll and give he, you some information. He on has him. a daughter, I understand, uh, at the dentist tomorrow. And that's way more important than visiting with us. So That's correct. And um, I'm sure that appointment was made for quite a while. So. Uh, anyway, thank you, Kim, and, and maybe the governor's office will have somebody to introduce them to us. Okay. Thank yes, you. that will be Erica Ligurski. Okay. And Senator Anderson, I'll be sending you that Zoom link and some information for that meeting. Well, bless your heart, Kim. Bless your heart. Much appreciated, Kim. Thank you. Committee, anything else for the good of the cause? All right. We are adjourned.